You're listening to Trek FM. Hello, welcome to a new episode of From There to Here, Trek FM's 50th anniversary rewatch of Star Trek in which we look at all 729 episodes from beginning to end. I'm your host, Richard Marquez, and here with me is... Amy Nelson. How you doing, Amy? I'm doing fabulous this evening. Very excited. We're going to be talking some Deep Space Nine and Voyager today. Yay! A double parter. Yes, our even better. Awesome. So, take us away with Chimera. All right. Well, Odo returns from a conference with an unexpected guest, a changeling who tracked and boarded his runabout. So, we have one of the Lost Hundred. Is that where yes. he's from? All right. Yes. He's one of the 100s uh, that the founders sent out. Yep. Yes. So, what did you think of Chimera. I th- I thought it was a very good episode. Um, it was very um, I I want to say a xenophobic uh, sort of uh, episode in in the in the reverse uh, uh, point of view that you know he thinks he's better than everyone else and and in and, and, and throughout the episode Odo is trying to say you're not better than anyone else and on top of that these are my friends and you're insulting them. Um, and I don't quite appreciate it sort uh, sort of like feel to it. And it's a very, it, and, and, you know, it's an interesting episode to, um, see it through the eyes in a sense of, uh, through the founders eyes. Cause I mean, he's never experienced the founders, but yet he's been alive for what, a couple hundred years or something like that. And yeah. he's been, a, he's been a rock or whatever, uh, on that planet that he was on. And we're talking about loss, uh, the, the, the new change link that, uh, was floating around that meets up with Odo, and um, it's it's a very it's a very interesting episode. Very interesting. I, episode. Yeah, I think you can see you know because Odo is defending basically humanity, and his choice to remain in human form really boggles Loss's idea. And it's like, why are you still being human? And so it just goes to show that Odo is really learning about humanity, and therefore we as viewers get to learn about humanity through it. So I appreciated the episode doing, you know, teaching that us. I I thought it was an excellent, I've got so many notes for it. I just love how they're teaching each other, you know, and it's, it's like when you meet someone who's like your kind and you can see the chemistry between Loss and Odo, that they really enjoy each other. And finally, Odo has someone that he can relate to that's not... Not tainted by the founders? exactly. Not tainted by the founders. And so you've got here Odo is with humanity, and here's Loss who's way older, and so the old is schooling the young, but then Odo is schooling him as well. So it's this give-and-take relationship that I think is done so, so well. And you can see the growth that Odo takes. And Loss, I think he does really try and, you know, because he does stick around even longer than he wanted to. Um, but he just feels that there's more out there. And I, I think that that's fine. I mean, sometimes in my own life, I feel like, well, I'm here, but I feel that there's something more out there. I'm sure if I stay where I'm at that I could learn more. But, you know, sometimes that adventurous spirit just takes over. And so I really like seeing both sides of this story. I think it's so well done. Yeah, I, I definitely. Uh, yeah, you, th- both of them can take something from each other, and it's very, it's, it's. Yeah, like you said, I mean, uh, Odo's uh, basically defending humanity, and you know, he never really had to do that. I mean, yeah, we saw him with the female change link, and uh, he, uh, she had a ballpark idea of what was going on, but she still wouldn't listen to anyone, mm-hmm. obviously because they're at war uh, with the human, you know, the, um, solids. Yet, even though they use solids to fight their war, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, yeah, it's it's a very interesting episode that you know, seeing it from I guess someone who's never, or I, I guess someone who's been 
Uh, well, in a sense, he actually was tainted by humans because uh, they didn't appreciate who he was, uh, and he was ridiculed. And, and he was even once married, but he couldn't have children, obviously. Right. Um, and it, he just, I guess, on his own resented uh, humans altogether. Maybe uh, maybe Odo, I don't know. Maybe Odo would have been the same way. Right. Because, um, yeah, like you said, I mean, I mean, maybe they're not exactly older than each other, but... Uh, definitely Odo was found later in his life cycle or whatever you want to call it, life, and just didn't learn as, as, as all the stuff that Lost learned in that time, in that same time frame that they all, they both were released by the founders as the 100 mm-hmm. into the galaxy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And I really liked the fog where he was just existing as fog. And, you know, is this changeling pride demonstration and so important to, you know, make other people, hey, I'm different. And I, I thought that was a really nice twist to throw in there as well. I love how you said that, changeling pride. <laughs> yes, I know. Yes. <laughs> I like that. I mean, given given the situation around the country right now, I mean, exactly. yeah, that's, yeah, it, it definitely, you know, be who you want to be. <laughs> yes. Fog. Could you imagine being fog? <laughs> oh, I know. How freeing would that be? I mean, that's, that's the, yeah. And in the end, Odo coming back. I mean, can we just pause for a moment and... You know, and and uh, Kira saying, Odo, leave, go and be happy. What a true definition of love is putting someone else's happiness over your own. And for Kira to, you know, wish him well. And even though it's going to hurt her and she's going to feel the loss, um, you know, that I think is really uh, that's when I fell in love with Odo and Kira in this relation in this episode. And they're they're definitely d- two s- way different people. I mean, one's rigid. Well, no, not necessarily. Actually, they're actually quite quite the similar. Actually, one's rigid, but uh, is not willing to make mistakes and uh, is with the law. And the other one is, in a sense, a rebel. And um, it, uh, she's very confident in herself. So is Odo. Um, they both are. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess yeah, they're kind of they're kind of the same people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it was good to see, you know, Star Trek again handle a good uh, love relationship. I mean, Deep Space Nine is doing it. I'm I'm feeling it from Jadzia and Worf, and now Odo and Kira. Outstanding, awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so where uh, where do you rate this? Oh, this one's good. This one's really good. Um, I'm gonna give. <laughs> One and a half thumbs. <laughs> <gasps> One and a half thumbs? <laughs> I really do. I just think there's so much good here. Of Yeah, Loss and Odo, I think it's really good. How do you rate Chimera? Um, I'm going to just go with two, uh, two hands, two thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> I gotta one you up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> no, it was it was definitely good. It was definitely a good episode. I mean, it's a th- like I said, you know, thinking of it from the other side, uh, that you know, the resentment is uh, is obvious from the get go. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Lost didn't trust humans whatsoever, but yeah, he trust. He, yeah, he never saw another changeling, but he uh, but he trusts him. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it definitely was one of my favorites yes <laughs> i agree so should we move on to dark frontier parts one and two so exciting it is very exciting take it away so the voyager crew trains to raid a borg ship meanwhile two years after being liberated seven of nine rejoins the borg seemingly of her own will dun 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 amy i got i got two words for you what Fort Knox. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of this episode? <laughs> um, this was exactly what I wanted. Um, I sat down. I was like, oh, I really want to watch a movie. And I needed to watch this. And it was a two-parter. So it was nice and long and a good developed story. You get the flashbacks 
with seven of nine and their training and it's just so good. I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was one of my favorite two parters. I mean, besides the year of hell, um, which was my favorite of, uh, of Voyager, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, definitely, uh, it, anything to deal with the Borg, uh, especially when they're in that scary moment that they're going to get assimilated or, or, or the possibility of even getting assimilated is so intriguing, uh, of an episode, especially when, uh, Voyager or, uh, Captain Janeway wants to, in a sense, like infiltrate, uh, a, a, a Borg, uh, was it Sphere? I think that's what it was, yeah. uh, is what they wanted to do to get a trans warp coil, which, you know, shaving off 20 years on your voyage, I mean, well, grabbing one or two of those, yeah, it's, I think the risk is worth it. Yes, <laughs> and, definitely. And what an appropriate freaking analogy to uh, bring in their Fort Knox for, for the 20th century, because, I mean, that thing is impenetrable. I don't know if you've been to Fort Knox, but that thing is is like they said, it's a fortress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. It puts it in perspective. That's for yeah. Sure. Yeah. And you know, I liked how they were using, um, seven of nines. Oh, what's her real name? Anna? Annika. Annika. Yeah. You know, using her parents, you know, memoirs and, and entries to try and figure out and that they did use their, phasic thing so they couldn't be detected so they could stay on the board ship a little bit longer and uh yeah break into fort knox so it was so good and seven of nine's hesitancy to start and to open up those feelings i'm sure it was very difficult and you can see that play out and then you know she still has the implants and so the queen talking to her and it, it was so good the drama was yeah, very very high. Yeah, I, I definitely, and it, it was uh, bio dampeners. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, is what they uh, what they were using. Uh, the, the Hansons, um, Annika's, or some of Nine's parents, um, and it, it's like it, I mean, it's something like that. You I mean, whenever we see the Borg, and obviously the crew of the Enterprise, which we'll talk about later in T in in Earl Grey. Um, uh, it just seems it just seems like you know if why would you need a bio dampener if they ignore you anyways <laughs> i mean it, i mean really are they gonna really recognize you i mean they would have stopped you know Riker and all of them uh on the on a board on the board cube and you know best of both worlds or or even what's her name um uh shelby Shelby, thank you. <laughs> See, perfect. <laughs> so, uh, you know, with, with Shelby and everything on the uh, on the board cube and best of both worlds, you would think that they wouldn't need a bio dampener. Well, I think like there's that. a difference between knowing and recognizing. So they could be on the ship, and the Borg may know about them, but you know, like a fly, who cares? You know, but the Borg still probably knew. But being recognized as a threat, then yeah. So if they can stay hidden that much longer, I, I think there is a difference. And so I think it was needed. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's very, it, it just, it just didn't seem like it. I mean, it was, it seemed like it was a part of the, I mean, the filler story or, or, you know, something like that, but you know, that's me. Yeah. So what did you think about the, the parents perspective on the board? I found it disconcerting that they continued after multiple proof that the Borg are not nice, they're not friendly, they're not people who are misunderstood, but yet they continue to have this perspective of, oh, we need to befriend the Borg, and we're going to take our daughter with us. What did you think of that perspective? Oh, man, you had to go there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, honestly, I, I, it's, to me, it's reckless, as, um, as we heard from uh, 7 and 9 uh, say before. Mm -hmm. that, you know, and you know, she was angry at them for being assimilated. And, yeah, they got reckless. They got cocky. Uh, they were overly arrogant, um, especially with their, um, their research with the Borg uh, on not being detected and whatnot. But like, um, you know, seeing it from the outside, uh, it, it, to me, yeah, I would think the same thing. It's reckless. I mean, could you imagine trying to 
uh, let, let's let's put into perspective of today. I mean, would you ima- would you take your daughter out to the high, or the jungles of like the Amazon or something like that? And there's bugs that can kill you with one stroke of a poison or, or or whatnot or one prick of a poison or something like that. No, you're not gonna bring your child to that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's it's basically the same thing. You wouldn't want to endanger your child. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I I sort of understand maybe what the writers were trying to think that, you know, trying to humanize the Borg and to gain more research and we just need to know about them, then we can understand them. But I think when you have so much evidence of what the Borg are, you can't just turn a blind eye and say, well, I want to see this because that's what I want to see. Uh, so I, I appreciated you know, seven of nines, her perspective that it's like, yeah, this was wrong. And, and I happen to agree with her on that. Well, some of the greatest explore uh, explorations were the most dangerous trips or at least of that time. So maybe they were trying to be pioneers um, of exploration, especially when it comes to Borg. <laughs> yes. I don't know. <laughs> I would never bring my daughter. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. um, what did you, where, where do you rank this? Oh, this, this, I full two thumbs up, two thumbs up, two thumbs up. You're going to give us two. Yes. Yeah. I, you know what, uh, since it's a two parter and you know, it's one of those interesting episodes that, uh, if you were playing it continuously, I wouldn't know where one, where one begins and where two begins or even one ends at all. No, so, I didn't know yeah. that because I was watching it on Netflix, you know, and I didn't have to change episodes or anything. So yeah, it was just one continuous and that's, I loved it. Loved it. And it's, it, I think, I, I do believe that it was one of those episodes where it aired as one continuous episode. Um, I'm not, don't quote me on that, but I think that's, or at least that's what I remember, uh, uh, dark frontier being so you know nice. but two thumbs up one for each episode yay <laughs> we agree <laughs> yay <laughs> well richard this has been so much fun where can people find you on the internet well i'm glad you asked that because <laughs> i'm co-hosting earl gray with you yay, yay! <laughs> So exciting. Um, I, I'm also on the uh, Facebook as well. I'm on the Babel conference here and there, pop in there, uh, stir, in, uh, stir the pot a little bit, and then pop right back out. <laughs> um, but I'm also on uh, Twitter. My handle is X Ransom. How about you? Well, I also, as you mentioned, am a co host of Earl Grey. Yay! With Yay! Richard and Lee. <laughs> And I also will be in the Babel Conference. I really enjoy uh, reading your comments and would love to hear what you think about uh, Dark Frontier and Chimera. Yay! All right. So that does it for us today. Uh, Next episode is going to be a Voyager episode, The Disease, and one of my favorite episodes, Bada Bing, Bada Bang. (laughs) 